Hello, hello everyone. Now, I kind of need to pack my bags, because I'm flying to Moscow tomorrow, but the Henry commentary has been requested so much as of late, so I figured I would feature one and maybe I can have it like process overnight and then in the morning before I get on the plane I'll upload it for you guys or maybe I'll leave it to upload overnight, whatever. We'll figure something out. For those wondering, I'm flying to Moscow to take part in the Wargaming Fest, which is basically the BlizzCon of World of Warships. Oh well, BlizzCon of Word, uh, Wargaming in general. There's World of Tanks and of course all their other titles as well. The Donskoy gives a lot of broadside, so I try to punish him. One of the things with the Henry is that the AP penetration on the Henry is actually fantastically good. Even though the shells look quite lazy as they fly through the air, and you usually have to aim a lot further in front than, for example, Moskva, the AP penetration is actually almost similar to Moskva's AP pen. So if you do get broadsides, you can absolutely sit that I'll punish them extremely heavily in this ship, and that's something people tend to underestimate a lot. Worth noting is that, of course, I'm running Expert Loader, because it allows you to switch ammunition types so quickly, and as both the HE and AP are very punishing on this ship, being able to quickly juggle those is very useful, especially since it has the Expert Loader, which reduces your reload significantly, and if you pop both Expert Loader and, oh sorry, uh, the reload booster and you run expert loader, you can switch ammunition type very quickly. That is a strike coming in on my core force from the carrier, and this exactly is why I quite enjoy running defensive AA on the Henry instead of Hydro. Because if there is a carrier in the game, the Henry AA is actually very, very strong with defensive AA active, and you can shred any strikes coming in very, very quickly. Now, one single squad isn't exactly a good example, but it's kind of to prove the point that the AA is very potent if you build for it. It looks like the enemy team is pushing through the north though, so I'm going to try to delay and slow them down as much as possible, because not many other members on my team seem to really be paying attention or even noticing this. Now something special about the Henry is of course that it's got 240mm guns, which means that, well, it's got some unique characteristics that other cruisers don't. For example, you can overmatch uh, Royal Navy cruiser noses and sterns. They are 16 millimeters of armor and 240 can actually overmatch it. So a Minotaur that can push nose in against, for example, a Moskva or a Zao or a Des Moines, uh, if he tries to do the same against your Henry, you can actually citadel him straight through the nose because your gun caliber is large enough. Another advantage of this improved or larger caliber is the fact that you can pen 38 millimeters of armor um, just like that without running anything extra. Now, what has become very much a part of the meta as of late because there's been, well, a new ship added, Stalingrad. And Stalingrad is a bit unique when it comes to cruisers because it has 50 millimeters of armor pretty much everywhere except a small part of the nose. And the Moskva has been given also a buff to 50 millimeters of armor. So the Henry that has 38 millimeters of pen, if you slap IFHE on it, you can suddenly penetrate 51 millimeters, which means you can do raw damage to the likes of Stalingrad, Moskva, and multiple other ships. For example, Grosse Korforst, Kabarovsk. Kaba, people often underestimate how much uh, HE the Kaba can easily shatter and um, he, it's got a plating of 50mm all across the broadside and usually shatters a lot of HE but IFHE Henry can actually punch straight through that. So in this commentary I'm actually running the IFHE Henry build. Now it's useful for more than just competitive because well the 50mm plating has become a fair bit more common in the game. And more importantly, there's not really that many other good options to use it on. Another thing is, of course, the introduction of the reload booster, which means you're even better at punishing battleships. If you can force the damage con from a battleship, you can use your reload booster to almost guarantee a follow-up fire. Now, all these DDs are pushing around my stern, as you can see, and I'm honestly, I'm just slowing down, I'm playing it slow, so they can't just bomb rush my Essex who's hiding in the corner. So even though they're shooting me, I'm honestly, I'm kind of just delaying to buy him time. Because they are afraid of playing too aggressive as long as I'm here. Even if I'm not shooting them, the threat of me shooting them is enough to play, make them play scared. Now, 
The armor on the ship isn't that special though, and you gotta be real careful with not being overmatched and just straight penetrated from pretty much all sorts of AP in the game. So you got speed, you got fantastic speed, and you got pretty good maneuverability, you got good range, and you need to use it to keep on the move. Because as you can see from that Montana as well, the damage that they can deal to you is devastating. So I'm keeping my range at all times and I'm just farming this team as they're pushing in. And another issue is of course that other cruisers will also de deal a lot of raw damage to you because well, your thin armor means that it's, you're very easy to punish with HE. Haraguma for example loves farming Henry because it can pen pretty much every part of the ship. Trying to start some fires on these guys, trying to angle kite away once again. I'm buying a lot of time for my team and I'm drawing a lot of fire as well. In fact, if you look at the potential damage, we're only seven minutes into the battle and I already have a million potential damage. So I'm slowing down the enemy team and just giving my team time to react because, well, they're not reacting really that well to this incoming push. And this is something that Henry is very good at. And that's just delaying. Uh, buying time and being this annoying. If if you get to play on the side that the enemy team is pushing into and you get to be the guy who kites away and farms them as they push in, then the Henry is an excellent choice. And it's very, very useful at this. One of the things I dislike about the Henry is, oh, you see that raw damage? That's IFHE. The, the Kurfurst, for example, has that 50 millimeter armor plating all, all across its deck armor. And with IFHE, you can pen right through it. So instead of getting shatters like I normally would, I'm actually able to penetrate it. Also, he damaged on the fire, so I popped my reload booster to get some follow-up fires. Now, I messed it up a slight bit there. I was so angled at that uh, my front guns were just a couple of degrees out of whack, so I didn't get the full value out of the reload booster that I could have. I missed out on a few seconds when I was too angled, and that's... Well, it happens when you're being careful about not being punished too hard. We do get the follow-up fire though, as a good example for what I said earlier. You force the damage con, you pop the reload booster, you're almost guaranteed at least one fire, and eventually you get the follow-up fire. And now this guy is really cooking, and then we add of course the raw IFHE penetration, and that 50mm plating gets... Is it just eating raw damage? The shatters you see, well, that's hitting the belt armor or hitting the turrets. The rest of the part, the rest of his ship is just eating raw, uh, raw damage constantly. So, at these kind of things, the ship is very, very good, and you can just farm and burn down any ships trying to push into you. The issues, of course, come from the fact that you don't really have any utility. You lack radar, and well, if you run hydro, you got some 5k hydro. If you run defensive AA. Yeah, you can kind of help with the planes, but in general, you're very reliant, reliant on your team not dying too quickly. And my team is kind of dying really quickly this game. We have already lost five ships, so I really need to get something done. But first things first, get rid of the Kurfurst. As long as the Kurfurst is here, I can't really push into those destroyers. And uh, as long as he's around, I'm going to struggle to rush them and kill them because he can punish me. Once again, I pop the reload booster and this time we should be able to get some better damage out of it. Trying to finish him off before he can heal up too much. He is healing, but I'm keeping him in check with that reload booster DPM. And since he's unable to really deal with the raw HE damage, there's not much he can do. We get that follow-up fire and now I know he's going to go down. And I already start turning around. Now, finally, I no longer have a battleship sitting on my broadside. And that battleship sitting on the broadside is what has been keep keeping me away from these destroyers. So now I can finally turn out, turn around and see if maybe I can push in and deal with them because our carrier, well, he's kind of stuck in a corner and I need to keep them away from him because, well, he could have moved with the team uh, down the J line. He could have easily moved to safety, but he's been stubbornly sitting here. So we kind of have to play keep away with the enemy and try to keep him safe here. The DDs get spotted briefly. But our carrier is more focused on striking with those bombers than actually spotting, which makes life a bit harder. Shimakaza makes an unexpected turn here. I'm trying to figure out what he's doing, and I think he's actually rushing my core force by the looks of it. If he's actually rushing my core force, then I'm gonna pop reload booster because it's very important that he dies before it kills him, because my core force is being very useful to me right now. Uh, instantly, I pop the reload booster, 
and we do manage by the looks of it to actually get this kill. He does get the torps off though, but only one volley. This and let's see if we can help with the lightning as well while the reload booster is active. You want to help your <laughs> battleships if they're tanking for you. You want to try to like use your consumables and actually help them out as much as possible. Sadly, he does go down. And at this point, we're stuck with Montana, Zhao and uh, Terpits in front of us plus the cover. So I got to turn away and I got to start kiting again. The... Montana interprets alone would already be a problem. The Montana is actually so low, I'm gonna see if I can finish him. But here you get to see something I mentioned earlier, and that's the vulnerability to HE damage. Actually, Zhao is now shooting AP, but that won't last long if I just angle enough. He does get a 7k volley, which isn't exactly nice, but it's not the end of the world. What's important is that I kill this Montana and open up the ability to rush the Turpets. As long as he's around, I cannot do this. I need to angle against the Zhao AP, I can just entirely disrespect it. I angled enough to bounce it this time, so I expect he will be switching to HE. We do get a fire on the Montana though, and we're gonna see if we can get rid of this guy. He seems to be burning quite steadily. This is another tier 10 battleship that's in our spawn and causing so much trouble for me because what these things do is they bully you out. And there's not much, this is not a Moskva that can push nose in and just tank. If you try to do that in the Henry, you will die. And it's not a Zao that can sneak up and try to get some torps off, you don't have the concealment for it. No, the only way to get rid of problems like this in the Henry is to whittle them down with firepower. And now you, st you start seeing the damage I'm taking, that's just raw Zao HE. And it's not fun to be on the receiving end, especially since I can't afford to really speed run away from here either. I have to slow down and just take it because we need this kill. I have to get rid of this Montana. We need the points. And more importantly, uh, our Essex is still hiding in that corner. And if they manage to push through there, the Kaba, for example, looks like he's already sneaking there. Then the, it's pretty much game over. He finally realizes he won't be able to disengage. He tries to turn away, but I get the follow up fire and that someone else actually finishes the kill, finally joining in. But regardless, we get the kill, which is the important thing here. At this point, I've racked up 179,000 damage and also 1.9 million potential damage, just in my efforts to delay and slow down and stop them from getting into our camp and stop them from getting into to kill our poorly positioned uh, carrier. It looks like the Turpitz is taking pot shots at him. And honestly, <laughs> this is just a big problem right now. I am spotted, that means the Kaba is nearby, and there we have the Kabarovsk. Now the Kaba is actually usually quite resistant to HE. The entire broadside of the Kaba is 50mm HE plating, but when you run this IFHE build, well, none of that resistance remains, and you tend to just get raw penetration on every part, and that's of course what we want. That's exactly what we want when we spec IFHE. So I like this commentary in the sense that he doesn't show the stereotypical useful targets for IFHE Henry, which is uh, the Essex side goes down because his positioning was so poor. Um, yeah, as I was saying, it doesn't show the usual stereotypical Moskva or Stalingrad farming, but it shows some rather unusual targets that you also gain benefits against, like the Kaba and the Grosse Korforst. Terpitz is still pushing in, so we're just gonna start farming him in return. That's another well-armored battleship, but of course, Henry doesn't really care. Henry just deals damage. The planes are really, kind of arrogantly just hovering on top of me. I'm tempted to blow defensive AA just to get rid of them, because he's very arrogantly sitting on top of me. I've taken a fair amount of HE damage, and if he's actually going to hover these planes, I might just get rid of them soon. The AA on the ship is quite good without defensive, but if you pop defensive, it becomes very strong. Even though the Zao has probably stripped a fair amount of my HE or, or my AA by now. Yeah, at this point, I just lose patience with this plane. So I focus far, I pop defensive and focus far, and the Kaba is popping up close range. Now, usually Kaba in these situations can tank a fair amount of damage, but look at this Henry plus reload booster damage: four thousand broke his engine. He angles in. He's afraid of that incoming damage, but even knows in, there's only so much he can do about it. 
He tries to angle, he's used to bouncing or shattering or being able to deal with more of this damage. But against the Henry there's just no chance. And honestly, I'm kind of baiting. For those wondering, why aren't you using your heal? Well, the purpose here is to bait ships into shooting me and commit over commit like he's doing. When you only have one heal left, there's really no... And you, you're sure, you're confident that you're not going to die. There's not really much point in using it until you're actually forced to do it to prevent dying. If I had two heals, I would use it right away because I want the second heal to be available. But when you only have one heal left, you can use it to basically mind game your opposition a lot. Like the combat there, he thought he had a chance of killing me, the Turpits thought he had a chance of killing me. So they played very aggressive and they pushed into me trying to secure that kill. But the true, the true point there was that they, they were never even close. They thought they were close to killing me, but they never actually had a chance. And that's why I love like drawing it out and of course you get the AR benefits of being low HP so the longer you delay the heal the more DPM you deal and that's especially if you got the French special captain with the improved AR it's especially powerful on the Henry. Note that it requires knowing how much damage the enemy team can do though and sitting around holding your heal only to get killed for no reason is of course a poor choice. Sadly, I didn't get the Turpits kill either, so uh, that's the second kill we missed out on. We could technically already have six kills by now, but our damage and our potential damage is proving very useful for our team, and the Kaba sitting in the enemy spawn has actually bought us a lot of uh, points because, well, they sat in, they had a sizable lead until it just constantly delayed them. At this point, for example, you saw that after that description, now I pop my heal. Why did I use my heal? Well, the reason here is that this is a Republic. The Republic has 430mm guns, which overmatch pretty much every single part of my armor besides my broadside Citadel armor. And he, with his dispersion, he can easily deal more than 7k in a single volley. Absolutely easily, because I can't really angle against his shells. If I get unlucky, he can easily do like 10, 15k even on my angle chip. So regardless of how well I play, there's a high risk there. So in this case, uh, it's not worth that small reload boost or debating. It's better to use the heal to make sure I can actually confidently deal damage without being afraid. Carrier goes in for a drop. I pop my defensive AA. My AA is pretty shredded, so I actually don't shoot down any planes. But the important point there is that I spread out the torpedoes into this huge wide spread, and it looks like our North Carolina actually only hits one single torpedo. So defensive AA, once again, proving very valuable in this game. And this is kind of why I prefer running it over Hydro. Both consumables are situational, of course. you got to keep that in mind. You run defensive AA, you get nothing but destroyers, you feel like an idiot. You switch to Hydro and then you get a carrier coming in to strike you when you're trying to play some flank and then you also feel like an idiot. So it's one of those situations where it's not very easy to win. Both have their uses. Personally, I prefer defensive AA. The Republic, of course, I'm telling him to get back. He doesn't want to get rammed because you can see the damage. The Republic has 32mm armor, you don't need IFHG to do what I'm doing right here, this is just the Republic's weakness, and that's, it has no real armor against HE, and trying to push in like the way he is, well, I'm just consistently landing shells on him, and fires and damage, and it just, it's just disgusting. Maybe we'll finally get our crack, and he finally goes for me, but I pop my speed boost as I saw his guns turn, and I'm able to angle my ship away from his shells. I was constantly keeping track of where his guns were pointed, and that's something you want to do when you're this close to the enemy ship. He gets a bit frustrated, I'm a bit surprised actually my NC is shooting HE against this guy, which is very questionable, since with AP you could have killed him a lot sooner, there for example. But maybe this means we'll be able to get our Kraken here? And the North Carolina's fire denies me my Kraken in the very last few seconds. So the game ends. 285,000 damage. Mm, if that's not a statement to be made about the raw damage potential of the Henry, I don't know what is. By the way, if you've been taking shots every time I say raw, you're going to be absolutely suffering from alcohol poisoning. I'm in a bit of a hurry, as I mentioned, since I need to pack my stuff, but I do want to finish making this commentary. 15 planes, defensive AA coming in strong. No Kraken, denied by three different teammates this game. Sad, but not much I can do about it. Team score wise, 2.8k, and the closest one behind me was the North Carolina with 1.4k XP. So obviously the carry was quite real, and it does show that 
The Henry, if you give it enough time, if your team stays alive long enough for you to be useful, you can be quite a terrifying DPM monster. Detailed report wise, pretty much the majority there will be um, HE. <laughs> In fact, almost uniquely. Besides the early AP against the broadside Donskoy, I pretty much stuck to HE the entire way. I almost farmed a double wither this game. Um, AP is good, don't get me wrong, the AP is fantastic, that's why I highlighted it early on. This game was just one of those games where it just felt like HE was more consistent and more reliable, so I ended up using it on pretty much everything. But that's not that you should underestimate AP, especially with the reload booster. Even broadside battleships can melt in seconds if you manage to catch them off guard, because we're talking 10k AP per volley with reload booster, which you can do 40 50,000 damage to a battleship all of a sudden. So just because you saw me shoot almost nothing but HE this game doesn't mean that you should completely ignore the AP. It's very strong. Potential damage, 2.3 million. I was the one who was delaying them that, uh, on that flank and kind of tanking, tanking but not really tanking and trying to delay them. Anyway, let me show you guys my recommended build for the ship. As usual, I'll start off with the modules. Not too much to talk about here, but consumable wise, you want to start by having your damage con premium and your heal premium. The damage con for the faster cooldown and the heal not just for the faster cooldown, but for the additional charge as well. Follow it up with reload booster, speed boost and the second consumable as the final one. I prefer defensive AA because it gives me confidence when playing against carriers. I can push flanks without being afraid of being struck. I can help out my teammates in case they get struck because the AA is actually quite good. 6.2 and 5.4 came range on the auras and the Henry actually shreds planes quite easily because of this. Um, ultimately though, Anyone who's played a cruiser knows the feeling of you run defensive AA and you get nothing but destroyers and then you switch to hydro and you get nothing but carrier games. Uh, which one you choose is ultimately up to you. Personally, I prefer the confidence in helping teammates and good pushing flanks more than the confidence in dodging torps because usually I don't feel I really need hydro to do that in the Henry. Upgrade wise, turret survival. Improved speed boost. This 50% is very important since you already have such a strong duration of um, three minutes. You boost it to four and a half. Um, AA range for obvious re reasons. The improved dispersion isn't really that valuable on a cruiser since your dispersion is already so good. Faster rudder shift, concealment, and faster reload. Captain perks wise. We have we run priority target like on all cruisers. Now note that if you have the improved French captain uh, Jean Jacques, uh, if you have this guy, I have I probably butchered that. I apologize. But if you have this improved French captain, then you got improved AR and improved turret traverse. So the special French captain is actually exceptionally good on the Henry. So if you do have it, I highly recommend it since you get all the bonuses you want. Ultimately though, this is my Russian account, so I don't, ha uh, I don't have him leveled since I got him so late. So I'm just running a default French captain. Ultimately though, priority target, AR, superintendent, concealment expert, and IFHE. IFHE, of course, to be able to penetrate, to boost that penetration from 38 millimeters to that magical 51, which allows you to counter Stalingrad's Moskvas and even punish Grosekurfors and uh, Kabarovsk and ships like this. So it does have its use. Um, I also, I've also ran builds where instead of uh, IFHE, I've ran AFT, but that is very situational, it relies on actually having to face carriers, so I do prefer IFHE for the value. Follow it up with Expert Marksman, because your turret verse is very sluggish. It's 37.8, I think, without it, you, can, you get it down to 32.5, it's still not that good. With the Special Captain, it's of course better. Expert Loader, to be able to switch ammo type faster, especially if you combine it with the Reload Booster, it's really fast. And uh, finally, Jack of All Trades. To, you have so many consumables, you want to be able to use them as quickly as possible. Note that until this point, you want to run Last Stand, because French rudders are so squishy, but the tier 10, the Henry, actually has a very sturdy rudder, so you can do without the Last Stand you would normally want, and there, there's really no need for it. In fact, this build that I'm showing right here is the build I would probably recommend for competitive AK clan battle play as well, because this has everything you want from the Henry. It bolsters everything you want, and the Henry, of course, has gained a lot of popularity in ranked uh, or in clan battles, 
mostly because it counters Stalingrad's oil counters is maybe a bit a uh, bit of a stretch but it deals with them very well because uh, nose in Stalingrad can't tank to Henry because of that 50 51 millimeter penetration can pen the armor and you do a lot of raw damage and of course the uh, longer fire duration means that the Henry is very good at farming damage from them on the flip side, of course, you are a very squishy cruiser, so keep that in mind. Don't just sail broadside and think you're going to come out the victor. Stalingrad will happily punish your broadsides. Flag-wise, um, fire chance is always useful. Improved heal is always useful. Speed is fantastic because you're already so fast, and that natural speed boost increase um, benefits greatly from already increasing this. And of course, to add to Jack of all trades, you add November Foxtrot for even faster consumable usage. After that, it's kind of up to you. You can slap a improved AA if you want, uh, detonation flags if you've got a lot of them. Uh, ultimately, though, at this point, you can just slap on uh, economy flags like I have done. Anyway, that was my updated Henry commentary, which has been requested a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now I gotta go pack my stuff because, well, I'm doing this in the evening before I'm flying to Moscow. I'm flying to Moscow on Friday morning and I'm gonna be covering the Wargaming Fest that is happening in Moscow on Saturday. I'm probably gonna be streaming and um, trying to find a bunch of goodies to give away to you guys and maybe get some sneak peeks at the console version of World of Warships, like what they're changing and what they're changing, of course, to the PC version version and maybe talk with some developers and there should be a lot of stuff happening so i need to go pack my bag and get ready for that uh, if you guys want to tune in you're more than welcome i will talk to you guys later i hope you enjoyed this commentary